I've been lusting after the Like a Q series for a little while, and uh, you know, you get sucked into those YouTube rabbit holes, and I was just getting this itch where I was like, you know, I I just want to try it. I want to I want to see what this is like. Is the hype real? All that kind of stuff. So, I rented a Like a Q2 for about a week, and I just want to share some of my thoughts on the experience. Now, first, some important context. I am not a professional photographer. I am, I would say, an enthusiast, a hobbyist. It's a, it's a very serious hobby for me. And I do use cameras for this YouTube channel uh, and for my work with Sofa. But professionally, I'm a designer and developer. I, I make apps, I make software, all that kind of stuff. Now, I personally own two cameras. I have a uh, Sony a7 IV, and this is kind of like my primary workhorse camera. It's what I use for this YouTube channel. Uh, I use it every day to take pictures. I, I take uh, photos and videos for uh, the app I make, Sofa. Uh, so it's kind of like a work camera too in that sense. Um, but also travel and stuff like that. Like it's, you know, I, I really love this camera. This camera is can really do anything, more than anything that I am capable of. And it's been a great camera to really learn on. Now, my other daily camera is the Ricoh GR3. And this is something that I literally bring this everywhere. This is always in my pocket or in my bag. And I will take this to the food store. I'll take it to, took it to a Flyers game recently. Um, I'll take it anywhere, like literally anywhere this camera goes. And I love this camera very, very much. And if there's ever a GR4, I will probably definitely hop in on that. Now, with all of those caveats out of the way, let's actually talk about the Q2 and what I think about it. So I'm not gonna lie, when I first got this as a rental, uh, I was actually a little nervous that I was that I was going to fall in love with this thing because uh, every, everything I've seen online, I'm like, oh my God, like this thing looks gorgeous. The um, simplicity of it, because you know I'm a designer and I, I love very uh, very nicely designed things, and I don't mind the minimalist choices of it. Like there's fewer buttons and dials and all that stuff. Like I I don't mind that kind of stuff. I actually prefer it a lot. Um, so I was actually a little nervous that I was going to love this and uh, then be like, oh crap, you know, how do I figure out how to, how to save for something like this? Cause it's very expensive. Now, good news for me is that I didn't love it and uh, I didn't hate it, but there's, it just didn't, I didn't connect with this camera in the way that I thought I would. The main reason for that is really the ergonomics of this thing. You know, when I got this, so this is, I think day seven that I've had it and I hold it every single day. I've been taking pictures with it every single day. And even when I'm sitting on the couch, I just kind of hold it and, and, and spin the dials and stuff like that. All of those little dials, they feel great. They make very nice tactile sounds. There's a couple weird things about the going into manual focus and everything, which I'll talk about. All those little dials, they, everything feels super high quality, super premium, right? Cause it's, it's you know, it's a very rugged camera. But the actual ergonomics of like holding this thing, I just like, it just, it's not comfortable. And uh, the bottoms are like kind of, uh, kind of sharp on your fingers. I get that there's like this, uh, this kind of like heritage and legacy of, of Leica cameras. But as someone who I didn't, I don't have that kind of like emotional connection to the, uh, the legacy of Leica, right? Like I don't, I don't have any family members who gifted me a Leica camera or handed one down to me or anything like that. Like I've literally, this is the first Leica camera that I've ever personally seen and held. I, I see this and I go, oh yeah, there's probably a reason I don't design cameras like this anymore, right? Like it doesn't actually feel good in your hand. And that's for me, right? So there might be people who hold this and they're like, yeah, it's fine. Like what's, this is not a big deal at all. But for me, like even uh, we went for a walk the one day and stuff and I had it around my neck and it was very comfortable just kind of like bouncing there and then I'll pick it up and take a picture. But I couldn't imagine like holding this thing for a couple hours at a time, walking around while traveling and stuff like that. Uh, just really, really not comfortable. Now the actual shooting experience of like 
you know, putting the viewfinder up and all that kind of stuff. Love that. And uh, the, <laughs> the, the EVF in here is uh, significantly nicer than my Sony a7 IV, which, uh, you know, as someone who wears glasses, I actually struggle with uh, the viewfinders a lot because a lot of times like, I can't get in close enough to actually see uh, what's happening. So I kind of, you know, sometimes my framing will get messed up and stuff like that. So I'll use the LCD or, or just kind of dig around and, and try and get the framing right. So this, uh, you know, range, fire sty range finder style viewfinder and EVF is actually awesome. And the quality is so much better than the uh, a7 IV. The a7 IV one kind of sucks. So this, like, this is great. And like taking pictures like this is, is awesome. Uh, but actually like holding this camera is just like not, it's not giving me the feels and it doesn't feel very comfortable to be honest. The one thing, the fact that it's a fixed lens camera, so it's a, it's a 28 and uh, it, I, I read a lot of people saying it, it actually feels wider and it's actually maybe like a 26 or something like that. It definitely does feel wider. Um, it actually feels closer to the 24 I have on the Sony rather than the 28 I have on the GR. But I didn't, I didn't actually mind that. And I don't, I actually like fixed lens cameras. Um, I don't mind the uh, the constraints with that. So I didn't see that as like a potential negative. I, I knew what I was kind of renting here, and I, I see that saw that as a uh, as a positive to be honest with you. Because like day to day, it's nice to just not have to think about it. Just pick a pick up a camera and, and start using it. But the lens is you know really nice. Uh, obviously very sharp and stuff like that. But when it came to image quality, so I took a bunch of images and. Obviously, like, I probably should have rented it for, like, a trip or something like that so I could, you know, really stress test it with image quality stuff. But the images that I've been taking kind of around, around home and going on walks and stuff like that, I am not, and again, I'm not a professional, right? And I, I'm, I'm an amateur enthusiast, hobbyist, whatever you want to say. And uh, I would still say I'm pretty new to all this. I am not seeing a substantial jump in image quality from both my Sony a7 IV and the Ricoh GR3. And, you know, you can definitely crop in more because there's more megapixels and stuff like that. But like, I'm not like, holy crap, this thing is insane image quality. Like, I feel like depending on the lenses I use uh, for either of my cameras, like I can get pretty close or to my eyes, the same. So from an image quality perspective, I'm, I'm not like blown away. And maybe I shouldn't have been because Maybe that was like a, a wrong expectation because honestly, like cameras today are, it's it's kind of hard to buy a bad one. Um, there's so many good cameras and Sony makes most of the sensors anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, I know there's all different flavors of stuff, but um, you know, image quality aside, I, I think the image quality is very good, but I wouldn't say like this image quality is significantly better than the Sony or the Ricoh. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the performance of this thing. And I actually found it to be pretty nice. So like the camera turns on really quick. I heard that isn't true for the Q3, so the Q3 is a little bit slower, but the, I feel like this turns on really fast. Um, the menus are really snappy. I, honestly, like I know people gripe about the menu system in Sony's, but like I design software for a living. I personally haven't used or seen a good menu system. Uh, within any camera. I think they're all flavors of fine or bad. So you just kind of get used to what's there and, and you, you know, you just kind of deal with it. And once you learn it, you're it's fine. And once you set stuff up, you're not in there that often anyway. Maybe like format a card or something, but day to day, I'm not in these menus all the time. But that being said, the menu system is very nice. Uh, it's very fast and responsive and stuff like that. So I found it to be pretty good. Also the autofocus, I thought the autofocus was fine. Uh, maybe that's because of my experience with the Ricoh GR3, because that autofocus is, I would say, worse than this, which is really not very good, especially in low light. So to be honest, I felt like this autofocus was was more than enough. Definitely nowhere near as good as, as the Sony, but it's fine. Like I, I, I don't always need like super, super fast autofocus. It's like, as long as it's like pretty good, it's fine. So I, I don't know. I didn't really have any complaints there. And I think... I've, when I was seeing or reading what people were saying about the Q2 um, autofocus being like horrendous or whatever, I don't know. I thought it was fine. So if you're, if you're on the fence, 
purely about the autofocus. I, I guess it depends on where you're coming from, but I, I have two cameras that have amazing autofocus and I would say probably terrible autofocus. So this was like kind of in the middle for me. All right, couple other random like ergonomic things. Again, when I'm holding the camera like this, changing the aperture dial is awesome. So nice, feels great, sounds great. All that stuff is really, really smooth and really easy to adjust even when my eye is up to the EVF like this. So I really love that. Changing the shutter speed, great. Uh, turning the camera actually on and off like that actual dial usually fine. Sometimes I'm like, damn, that thing is like a little sharp. So maybe I just have delicate hands. I don't know. On the lens itself. Okay. So there's this like little, this like little uh, button here where you have to press to go into manual focus. I don't, maybe I'm holding it weird or whatever. It, I find it very awkward to actually engage manual focus with this thing. And once I'm in manual focus, it's fine. But when I'm like holding it up here, I find like the way I have to like pinch this thing, like I'm even struggling right now. There we go. Now I'm in manual focus. And once I'm there, it's fine. But like the initial engagement of that and then even putting it back into autofocus is like, it's very, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Like ergonomics, again, like that shooting experience of like, it's weird. Okay, so it's weird how there's parts of this camera that I'm like, this is awesome. Like, this is really good. I love this and changing the aperture is so nice and like taking the uh, the picture and everything. Uh, but engaging manual focus and then going back to autofocus, like, I don't know. It just, it felt very awkward. I don't know what else to say. Uh, going into macro mode, it has this little switch here. You can go into macro mode. I found like where my fingers actually go, they don't go in like the, the kind of like ridged area here. There's like a, there's like a ridged area where you can kind of place your fingers for better grip and stuff like that. Um, my fingers don't naturally go to those spots. So I tend to go on the more slippery sides of things. And depending on like, you know, how much moisture is on my fingers, like the temperature, all that kind of stuff. I found that to be kind of like, again, awkward to engage macro mode versus non-macro mode. Um, yeah, I just felt like the the placement of those ridges was, I'm kind of like, where do I, how do I hold this thing to change that? I just, again, ergonomics of using the lens besides the aperture uh, uh, dial, I just think feels really uncomfortable and awkward. The last thing I'll say is the exposure compensation dial is like, again, this looks nice, right? But it's, I find it to be like too flush with the camera, with the camera body. And then actually changing it is like kind of hard. It's like, there's a little too much force here. And I get, you don't want to accidentally bump that stuff. This is a rental. So maybe like some of these dials, if I got it new, it'd be better. Uh, I don't know. I just found changing the exposure compensation dial to be a little goofy too. Because being outside, I usually, I will underexpose by usually like at least a stop or so. Um, so I, I do use that dial quite a bit and I, I found that to be a little uncomfortable, to be honest. So again, the ergonomics of this thing are definitely kind of this mixed bag of stuff that I'm like, that was really nice and that sounds good and that feels good. The things that almost feel the complete opposite of that where I'm like, oh God, this feels this feels terrible for me and I don't enjoy this at all. All right, so let's wrap this up a little bit. So I'm extremely glad that I rented this thing. Um, it's been it's been one of those things that you, you know, you see something either online or whatever and you, it, you connect with whatever that thing is, like the story of it, the design of it, whatever. And you go down these deep rabbit holes, but it, it's, it's really hard to know until you use something, right? Like what that experience is gonna be, how it feels, all those things. And I just wanted to kind of scratch that itch. Like I wasn't gonna buy it and then, cause this thing is very expensive and let's say I loved it. It'd be like, okay, maybe sometime in the future I can get something like this. Um, but it was just like, it was just like this thing in my brain. I was like, all right, I need to see if this is worth it, right? Like you see all this hype about it. 
what's what's the actual experience like for me and so i'm glad i rented it because i've learned that this camera is not for me the q2 is not for me the q series is probably not for me maybe like is in general are not for me i'm fine with that um there's there's other options that i i am enjoying but i think the biggest thing that you know because again i'm new to photography and uh when you're new to something, it's very hard to be able to articulate the things you're doing and why you're doing them and, and why you're making certain decisions because you just don't have that experience yet, right? Like if we're talking about design and software, like I can talk about that at a very deep level, but photography, I'm still a beginner with that. So I'm still learning how to articulate the things that are in my head and the experiences I'm having and I'm having and, and what I'm even looking to do. So uh, this was a very helpful experience for me because the most important thing that I've realized is that uh, I prefer the things that I value are ergonomics above maybe everything else, maybe even above looks and maybe even above like image quality, barring that like image quality everywhere is like pretty good. And the ergonomics of, for me, and again, this is all personal stuff, ergonomics are very personal. Because someone may hold a Q2 and be like, this is perfect. Um, but for me, the a7 IV is so comfortable to hold and to use. And the way the dials are placed here and on the front and the way I have certain custom buttons mapped and stuff like that is, it's awesome. And it, it fits my hand. It almost feels like perfectly designed for my hand. It's not too big not too small, feels really, really good. And I like to use small primes too. So like the actual weight of carrying this is like very, very manageable. Um, like I said, the, you know, using the EVF and stuff like that isn't the best for me because I wear glasses and it's sometimes hard to frame stuff. Um, and the, the quality of the EVF is not very good either. Uh, but the general ergonomics of this thing is just it's just awesome. Like it feels really, really comfortable to hold. And I have traveled with this thing and held this thing for many hours at a time with no issue. And the ergonomics aren't just a size thing either because I also have a Ricoh GR3. And this camera ergonomics are amazing. Like you would think that looking at that little, uh, the little grip that it would be uncomfortable it's really not right. You, you kind of do this and you can really do everything one handed with this thing. And, you know, changing the exposure compensation, you have a dial up here, you have your shutter and, you know, you can change your aperture and stuff like that right here. This thing is extremely comfortable to use with one hand. You can always use your other hand, that kind of stuff. And I find the experience with this is like using this is so pleasant. And I know the image quality isn't as good as you know say full frame but like the image quality on this thing is insane it's super super good and i've taken some of my favorite pictures with this thing simply because it is literally always with me and i did add a thumb grip to this just to make it a little bit easier to kind of kind of grip but like very minimal and makes makes this very comfortable so the ergonomics aren't specifically a size thing i think it's all relative to like how it's being used how it's being handled and I think I get why the Leicas are designed like that. Like there's, that's kind of the classic look. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I guess why like expensive cars, like a Porsche or something like that is like, you know, basically has the same design. Um, but also like there's a reason that camera designs have evolved ergonomically because we've learned new things, right? I hope this was helpful. Again, there may be people who watch this and, and think that, you know, I'm an idiot and I might be, but uh, if you're someone who has been lusting after the Q3 and you're on the fence and you're kind of like, I don't know what to do, maybe rent it for a week or a couple days and just see how it feels. Because honestly, when I took it out of the box and I held it, I was like, uh, I don't know if this is for me. So again, I'm very glad I rented it. And that was, this is my first time renting gear and I'll definitely do it again. That was such a good experience. Um, and much cheaper than buying something and then regretting it and trying to sell it later. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and uh, see you next time.